dieses Lied ist aus der Sehnsucht süßer Sprache. Come in. Reporting for work, sir. Relax, son. This isn't the academy. Yes, sir. And Mr. Sullivan will do just fine. I think you'll find that the COI is a bit more informal than your other branches of government. Now, let's set you to work. Some uh, city detectives sent this complaint over to us. It should be pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about the assignment, don't hesitate to ask. The door is always open, son. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. What is it, Mr. Pearson? Oh, yes, of course, your office. It's across the hall, and uh, please forgive the mess. Your predecessor departed uh, rather unexpectedly, and we're still short-staffed and haven't had a chance to clear it out for you. Well, I hope you can handle things on your own. It's something you're going to have to get used to with the COI. President Roosevelt had just authorized the formation of the COI that summer. They were supposed to be the outfit that handled the real spy stuff overseas. It was the place to be if you wanted real adventure. At least, that was the bill of goods the recruiters for the COI sold me. And here I was, stuck in a crummy old office, in Cleveland of all places, as far away from any real action as I could imagine. This might come in handy.
bunch of gibberish. this. Yes? Sorry to bother you, sir. Not at all, Mr. Pearson. Come right in. Sir, what happened to the fellow I'm replacing? Ah, uh, Walter Pensky. Good man. And a good agent. Once. The job got the better of him. I imagine he must have been under a lot of pressure, sir. We all are these days. Just remember, Mr. Pearson, we follow orders, not personal crusades. I will, sir. I, uh, I have a question about this case file, sir. Certainly. What is it? Sir, this munitions owner, Mr... Mr. Finster, is there anything you can tell me about him that wasn't in the report? Hank Finster is an interesting case. He's an important man with the fellows in the Defense Department, on account of the munitions factories he owns. But he's not wound all too tight, if you catch my meaning. Well, it's always one thing after another with him. If it isn't the Unions, it's the Reds. If it isn't the Reds, it's the Nazis. But he may have something there. Take a look at that invitation. What do you make of it? Well, the invitation's a little unusual, but it looks like fascist propaganda to me. And that it is, son. Now, I'm not saying it's Nazi propaganda. There are a hundred different organizations with fascist agendas, but this call to brotherhood could have come straight out of Hitler's Germany. Did you notice the quality of the invitation itself? It's not a pamphlet or a flyer. Whoever these people are, they have a certain amount of sophistication. And they seem to be targeting only people of wealth and influence in our society. You'll need to be careful not to ruffle any feathers. Yes, sir. Who handled this case when it first came in, sir? A city detective named Marillo. I guess he's got his hands full now. He's handling the torso murders investigation. Terrible work, that. They found another one just yesterday. Excuse me, could you tell me where Mr. Finster's office is? He's up there. You're welcome. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Finster? Jim Pearson from the COI. I've been assigned to investigate your complaint. Ah, oh, what the hell took you so long? 
I guess all my calls to Mayor Lausch finally got you guys off your cans. What can you tell me about this brotherhood, Mr. Finster? What can I tell you? Oh, what makes you think I can tell you anything? I'll tell you what it is, though. It's a Nazi conspiracy is what it is. No, what makes you say that, Mr. Finster? The invitation has no swastikas, no insignia, no clear-cut signs of Nazi involvement. Now you mark my words, young man. This is a Nazi conspiracy, or my name isn't Henry W. Finster. I'm gonna need some hard facts before I'm able to make that stick with my superior, sir. Where do they find you guys? What, what do they just pull you out of a pumpkin patch? It's right before your eyes. Those screwy symbols. You recognize the symbols on that invitation? I've seen them all over Germany. When were you in Germany, Mr. Finster? Don't you give me that look. Mr. Finster, I, I'm, I... There is nothing wrong with Germany. My grandparents were born in Deutschland. We still have family there. The German people are upstanding, hard-working, God-fearing folk. And the American worker can learn anything or two from them. The only thing wrong with Germany is that Austrian peasant and his gang are street thugs. My ap apologies, Mr. Finster. I am only trying to establish the facts in the case. Okay. It's been 15, 20 years now since I've been there. But I will never forget those symbols! Do you have any idea what those symbols mean? Of course not. I would never have to do with that sort of thing. What do you remember about the man that gave you that invitation, Mr. Finster? He's a no-good pub, I remember that. Do you remember his name? A guy employed a Nazi sympathizer right here in my own factory. He was an employee of yours? Of course not. I don't hire Nazis. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little confused. Who's the Nazi? Why did they send the boy to do a man's job? What are they trying to do? Drive me crazy? Um, wait just a minute, Mr. Finster. That's not called for. My foreman, George Hansen, I used to think he was a good man. Well, he drinks a little bit too much, but he's a hard worker. Well, anyway, how am I supposed to know he traffics with Nazis? Well, he brings this riffraff right through my doors, into my factory, right into my office. He could have killed me. He was standing as close to me as you are right now. Well, naturally, I fired him on the spot. Riffraff. No, you idiot. George Hansen. Haven't you been listening to a word I said? Do you remember the name of the man that gave you that invitation? Of course not. I he never mentioned it. He said he was just a messenger. Can you describe this messenger for me? I already described him to that detective. Look, I even picked his photograph out of one of their books. Oh, but he didn't care. All he was interested in was that vagrant killer. Well, if you ask me, he's doing this city a big favor. I wouldn't know anything about that, sir. Can you describe him again for me, please? For my benefit. You know, if you guys had done your work in the first place, you'd already know this. Yeah, he looked like a killer. Real mean, squinty eyes, red hair, and the bushiest red beard you'd ever want to see. Hey, there's no mistake in this guy. Do you have any idea where I might be able to find this messenger? Of course not. Okay, what about this other fellow, the foreman? Well, I used to live in company housing, but I had him evicted, of course. Do you have any idea where I might be able to find him? A man of my standing doesn't fraternize with his workers. Although, I have been told that George likes to throw his money around a lot on payday. The men, they like this cheap whiskey saloon in the Roaring Third. Uh, McGillies, McGarrity's, some kind of mick name. McGinty's, that's the name of it, McGinty's. 